Ah, may the fourth be with you. So there's been a ton of news, a ton of announcements. I think everybody uh, in the lightsaber community has got announcements. So I figured I'd chime in. Um, so for those of you who haven't been keeping up on the Crucible, obviously Frederick um, and a few different vendors like KR um, Sabers there uh, released the new Proppy Board 3.9. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Uh, Proppy OS 7 is still in beta. Um, there's a few more things to be tested, um, but I think it's moving along pretty well. There was a lot of new stuff. Um, but from my point of view, I wanted to just let everybody know I am working on the OS 7 library, but there's a lot coming. Uh, there's a lot of work still to be done. Um, I'm hoping when uh, the OS 7 goes um, for full release that I'm close enough to launch. Um, this will be a phased rollout. So OS, Profi OS 7 has so many new capabilities, so many new features um, that I had to basically rebuild more than half of the library's um, interfaces as well as how everything works just to make it so that um, we can actually use all these new capabilities. Um, and things that I've learned just from user experiences from OS 6 in particular, I wanted to build in. So it's been a really large undertaking. So I wanted to, first of all, take an opportunity to thank all of my uh, patrons on Patreon. Um, I haven't been putting out a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, all the work in OS 7 was already done. Uh, we're still doing testing and all that. Uh, but there hasn't been a lot of big announcements just because the scope of OS 7 um, in terms of the build, testing, and what's coming was so vast. Um, but the OS 7 library, in order to support all those features, has really been a big undertaking. Um, it took me a while to actually get the new features planned in. Um, and what I'm going to do is a phased rollout of additions. But I had to basically um, rebuild, first of all, how colors work uh, for all the styles and effects. Uh, so it's the new OS 7 library is going to have a brand new engine, if you would, for how colors are selected by users, uh, what you're able to do with those colors, um, as well as pretty much um, the customization possible. Um, in addition, in order to support things like alt font, um, all the new special abilities, um, all of the new interactive capabilities, there's a lot of changes to how styles are being built in the back end and how to make an interface that would make it easy for users, whether they are just coming into Profi or they've been using Profi for years, to be able to put all that stuff together. So I have bits and pieces that are working. I have pieces that are giving me trouble. Um, but I wanted to give a little sneak peek. Um, now, one thing just going forward, uh, because of the amount of work I'm putting into the OS 7 library, um, what I'm going to do is, as a big thank you, uh, both in terms of just for May the 4th, but also an ongoing thank you for all my patrons. Um, when the OS 7 library is done, I don't have the ETA yet, but it will first be released for early access to my official patrons and hires. So those of you who have been with me, who are patrons, um, who you know help me keep uh, maintaining the site, keep the site up and running, um, you're getting early access to the OS 7 library. Uh, same thing going forward with all of the phases. So I don't have a planned rollout because there's certain features that I have to actually do a lot of work to get them working. There's other features that are close. Um, and then obviously all the debugging. But uh, basically when I get it to a point where at least enough of the basic stuff is working properly, we'll do kind of a, a rollout uh, to the uh, to my patrons for initial early access to both beta tests, but also to actually use the library. Um, and then I will kind of set up phases for the next chunks that I get done. Um, there is so much that the library is going to be able to do when it's all said and done. It'll probably be several phases, um, but the planned rollout, I don't have an exact schedule yet, but the rollout will be for my patrons as a thank you. You are getting early access to the OS 7 library when the first beta phase one rolls out. And then all subsequent phases that I do as I add the new features, as I add new capabilities, you'll also be getting early access. Um, the length of time of early access, I'm still kind of thinking it through. Um, uh, what I think is fair. Um, obviously, I know everybody wants to be able to use the library, and particularly for OS 7. Um, so I do want to keep it fair. But those of you who have been patrons, I do want to make sure that I recognize, um, particularly uh, those of you who've been with me for a long time. Um, so the kind of just the initial announcement is that the patrons uh, will be getting the early access to the OS 7 library as well as as the new features get added. Um, the rollout will be coming as I have more information. So I still actually have a lot of work to do. I'd say at least for where it needs to be for a, even a beta, I'm probably about 75% there. Um, I do have big chunks done, but like I said, I'm still having some things that I have to kind of actually plan through, make them work. 
Uh, but I wanted to give a real quick show just because it is May the 4th. Um, so this is not finished. This may pop a bug or two while I'm using it. Um, but I wanted to kind of give a, a kind of a, a tease. Um, so one of the biggest changes in particular coming for the OS 7 library is going to be how colors are handled, not only for your base style, um, but also for all effects. Um, and this ties into particularly to the alt font capabilities of OS 7, um, as well as just the, the font synergy stuff. Um, a lot of those features actually are part of colors and how the, the style code handles colors. Um, so I had to rebuild the color engine. It's not really an engine, but rebuild all the scripts on how colors get handled, not only for the basics, um, but also for all the advanced features that we have. Um, so uh, hopefully you can see the screen well enough. You may want to enlarge this. I know the fonts are small, but if I shrink the screen, it gives me a little bit of trouble in terms of keeping the layout right now, because again, this is still a work in progress. Um, so one of the new things obviously is all the edit more arguments are going to be available at the top. So on the OS 6 library, the arguments were pre-assigned to each effect. So your base style had the base color and alt color available. Um, your prion had a prion color available. Your, your blast had a blast color available. Um, for those of you who either don't use edit mode or who wanted more flexibility, uh, there really wasn't an easy way without having to go in and do edits to the styles manually. Now, for the OS 7 library, you actually will be able to choose whether or not you use the edit mode colors and where they get applied. Um, and what that means is you can actually share um, colors. So particularly for things like prions or other effects, um, even like the off effects, uh, post off effects, if you didn't want to have a separate color in terms of editing, you could actually share the base color, or share any other color you want. It would still be fully editable. But when you edit that color, it would apply to all the effects that you wanted it to. Um, the other thing is particularly, again, related to the alt font, which isn't built yet, um, you want to be able to share that alt font capability across all effects too um, and how that works. Um, and then lastly is features like Kyber Select um, and a few of the other new multi-phase features, which uh, still have a, that'll probably be a whole long video to discuss. Um, in the OS 6 library, they applied only to the base style. So you would set up a Kyber Select on the base style, but all your effects would carry the same color. Um, because of the alt font capabilities, because of everything that we can now do with OS 7, you're actually going to be able to set up uh, related Kyber Select styles or related Kyber Select colors for all of your effects if you choose. Everything's going to be optional. Everything's going to be flexible. You can also choose to build styles that don't use the Edmo colors. Um, you can choose styles that use the uh, color change feature. Um, you can choose styles that use the color variation, which is the color wheel. Um, and then, or you can choose to build styles that don't have any color change built in and they are just a solid color that stays the same no matter what. No worrying about editing the colors, no worry about color change features. Just, hey, I want this style to always be with these colors and you can choose that as well. Um, and that was the biggest change and that, that took a lot to get into place, but now I've got the framework ready um, for that. So how it'll work now, and I'm gonna show just kind of the Kyber Select as a starting point because I've got it close to done. Um, so I've already chose my style. You can see the edit the uh, edit mode colors here if you want to use any of them or change them. Um, and these are universal now. So anything that you apply uh, to any of these colors, these colors will be carried through. But for my base style, I can choose, uh, and this is an incompleted list, um, but I can choose if I want to change it so instead my base style uses the alt color as its base color. Um, I can do that, and I can, or I can change it to this. And what that means is in edit mode or um, in the style arguments or in Profios Workbench, your base uh, style effect would actually be edited using the alt, in this case, alt color three, instead of base color. So you can pick and choose which of the style arguments you want to use. Or we can do Kyber Select. Um, and Kyber Select was a feature that was added for OS 6, but now it's going to be expanded and it actually has a lot more capabilities tying over to the alt fonts. Um, alt fonts are going to be applicable to Kyber Select, they're going to be applicable to multi-phase, they're going to be applicable to a lot of the interactive capabilities. Um, and that was part of the new features and the new UI I have to build too. Um, again, bits and pieces are done, bits and pieces are still uh, actually work in progress and bits and pieces are giving me a little trouble so I might have to redo how I'm going at them. But so Kyber Select, so I've just got kind of a quick example set here. For those of you not familiar with Kyber Select, it's a, a unique style in that the first time you go into a preset, you can actually choose the color from any of the colors you set up 
So I set up to use my base color, my alt color, alt color two, alt color three. I'm going to actually give a little bit better alt color here. So, and then what happens is before you ignite, you can turn um, the hilt and it will go through the available colors. So if I start, I can go through, so that's my base color. Uh, that's color zero. And then if I move over slight twist a little more, I'll get the alt color uh, option. If I twist it a little more, I'll get to alt color two. And then if I twist it a bit more, I'll get to alt color three. And you can add more alt colors if you'd like. Um, so if we wanted to add more colors, if I wanted to add another color option, I can choose any of the editable colors or I can choose a fixed color and I can pick it from any color option. So this is the, that's a bug we'll fix. I have to keep the screen up a little bit. You'll be able to choose from the color list, which are the predefined colors in my prop. Um, let's just choose, choose a purple. Or you can obviously choose from the color picker and make your own custom color. Um, so no more long drop down lists of colors. Um, it's gonna be through the color picker, but we do have the color list available. Um, and that goes for all of these. So if you want to change one of these alt colors using the color list, you could do that as well. So we can make all these changes or we can still adjust the RGB at any time. Um, and we can set all of that up. But here's the, so that's all capable. Now, technically what will happen is the uh, goal for Kyber Select will actually be, you'll be able to choose up to eight total colors. Um, that's uh, basically about the threshold that I've seen where it works well. Um, after that, the turning gets a little too tight. Um, but that's the goal with Kyber Select. Um, so there will be more options coming. I have to build those out. But now this is the other new capability. And again, this is still a work in progress. I, for, for all the effects now, if I want to change how, what colors get used for the effect. So in this case, I have a prion set up. Um, ignore again the naming. Uh, the names will be changing because the color is actually now chosen separately. By default, it would use prion color, but I could choose to just always have my prion use the base color. Um, and I can test that. So if I do prion, you'll see now it'll only use the base color. But it was using Kyber Select for the options. So I'm going to do change preset because that's how you reset Kyber Select. Um, I won't go into too much more details on that. But I can also now set it up to use Kyber Select as an option. Um, now, the way this works, though, is Kyber Select is still technically a base color selection. So if you don't set Kyber Select for your base color um, in terms of the base style, it's not going to be an option on your effects. But if you set up a Kyber Select for your base style, um, it will then be applicable to any effects or all effects. You would just choose it as the color option, and then you're going to be able to choose the colors you want. So if I wanted to use the pre color, I could, or if I want to just use a, if I want to match it, I can match it to the base color, match it to the alt color, match it to alt two, match it to alt three, and then we'll do the fixed color. I think it was like a cyanish, so I'm gonna pick a cyanish color. And this is just for demo purposes, so you would wanna make sure you're getting a good color. Um, and now what'll happen is as I twist my, oh, I think I used a purple actually. I use a purple for that guy. Let's get the purple to match up. This again, there will be a few bugs as we work through all this, but let's get that purple. So now what will happen is I've got, and the number of selectable Kyber options are based on your base style. But now if I change the twist angle, um, so that's using color three. So now if I do my prion, I'm going to get the prion in that color because of Kyber select. And then again, Kyber Select is a one-time deal. So once you've ignited the blade, unless you change the preset or reboot, it stays the same. So we'll do a change preset again. And this time, if I do my Kyber Select at this angle, which is, that's alt color, so that's going to be color one. And then I do my prion, it's going to use color one. So what this will do is, and this is not just your prion effects, this is any effects that you want, now can actually also correspond to Kyber Select. So you can actually have completely different combos of colors, not only for the base, but also for everything else. And this will be applicable to Kyber Select. This will also be applicable once built for all the multi-phase, dual phase, all the interactive capabilities. So no longer um, the colors for everything are going to be in play to be able to use any of the edit mode features you want. 
Um, if you don't want edit mode features, you can apply all the other color capabilities. You can keep your colors in sync very easily. Um, plus, again, uh, it hasn't been built yet, but all of these also tie into all the new alt font capabilities, um, both for effects, um, base styles, interactive capabilities. Um, so still a lot of work has to be done. Uh, so this is, again, just a tease. Um, but I wanted to kind of use May 4th, since it's a, a big day for Star Wars, as a kind of a quick peek for you guys. Um, again, uh, I still have a lot to do. Um, as I get to the point where I'm getting close for that initial rollout, um, I'll do some more videos. But uh, the initial availability of the style library for OS 7 is going to be early access to my patrons. Um, so if you're a patron, you will be getting the first notification um, as well as the first access to be able to play with the new capabilities. Um, and then all subsequent additional phases will be rolled out to the patrons first. Um, once I get to that point, I will formally uh, kind of give a, a timeline for how long the early access will last. But I think it, it'll it be, I, I want to keep it fair. So I do want to make it so that it's something special for my patrons. Um, again, as a thank you and a, a big thank you to everybody. Um, but I also want to still make it available to the community. Um, so it will be uh, available to the community at a point in the future. Early access will be given to the patrons um, who uh, support me on Patreon. So. Uh, lots more coming. I have a lot of work in front of me. Um, I also have a lot of debugging in front of me. I've already seen a few issues just pop up in this little demo. Um, so uh, as we get through, um, as I get through everything and get to a point, uh, just keep an eye out for more announcements. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely check out the Crucible. Uh, keep a, keep track of beta for OS 7 itself. Um, you can see all the information about the new Profi Board 3.9. Um, and then everything else that's coming. So uh, lots more to come. Um, there is, even though there hasn't been a lot uh, announced, there is actually a lot in the works. Um, so thanks everyone. And again, may the force be, may the fourth be with you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.